Hello friends, meet Reese. She has been diagnosed with severe asthma, just like you. Reese is wondering what this means. What is asthma? Asthma is typically categorized into three types, mild, moderate, and severe. Severe asthma is a chronic disease, which means it is something you will have to treat and receive medical care for frequently. As you know, asthma can make it very difficult to breathe sometimes. It can cause your chest to tighten and make you cough or wheeze. This is occurring because of bronchoconstriction, inflammation, and increased mucus in your airway. Your airway is the pathway that the air you breathe in takes to and from the lungs. What does that mean? Don't worry, we'll explain what it is later. Am I the only one that has asthma? You may be wondering this as well. No, you are not alone. In Canada, there are about 850,000 children with asthma and about 250,000 children with severe asthma. That's about one in every 22 kids. At a school, this would be about one to two kids in each and every class. Why do I have asthma? The exact cause of asthma is still unknown, but there are many factors that can be different for each individual. Some key triggers include mold, dust mites, fragrance, cigarette smoke, cleaning chemicals, and pets. So what is happening in your body that is making it so difficult for you to breathe? Imagine a cup of your favorite juice with ice and a straw. Next, imagine the straw is your airway and the juice is the air that you breathe in. As we said earlier, your airway is the pathway that the air you breathe in takes to and from the lungs. Now, if you squeeze the straw and try to drink, it is harder for the juice to come through. This is like the bronchoconstriction that occurs when the muscle in your airway squeezes super tight and no air can get through. Now, if you take a drink and the ice gets stuck in your straw, it is also harder to get the juice through. This is like the inflammation that occurs when your airway becomes irritated. This makes it hard for the air to come in and go out. Inflammation also occurs when you scrape your knee and it becomes red, sore, and swollen. And now, if you take your straw, dip it in a big bucket of slime, and then put it back in your juice cup and try to drink, it would be quite difficult to get the juice through. The slime is like the mucus that lines your airways to protect them. When you have asthma, there's too much of the slimy mucus for the air to get through. So, you might also be wondering, how is an asthmatic airway different from one in someone who does not have asthma at all? In a kid who doesn't have any asthma at all, there is no bronchoconstriction, so that tight squeezing. There isn't any inflammation, so the redness and the swelling, and there's very little mucus. The airway itself is a large circular opening and the air can easily move through. In a kid with asthma, such as yourself and Reese, the airways are a smaller star-shaped opening and it is so much harder for the air to get through. But what causes the airway to become squeezed, red, swollen, and full of mucus? There are many immune cells in your body that are responsible for the inflammation of the airways, including eosinophils, mast cells, lymphocytes, monocytes, and neutrophils. This may sound like gibberish, but all these cells are what work together to cause this asthmatic response. It is important to remember that your body is not trying to harm you. It is trying to help get rid of an allergen or irritant in most cases, but the incorrect response is used. Imagine that your airway is a city full of different places and people. The good citizens are your immune cells and the bad guys are the allergens or irritants. At your airway's bank, a bad guy comes in and is about to steal all of the money. Luckily, there's a police officer outside and he sends out a call for backup. Instead of another police officer, a firefighter comes in his fire truck and begins to spray the bank with water, which causes damage to the bank. A little way down the street, there is a bee farm where honey is produced. A hungry bear walks in. This is like an allergen or irritant and starts shaking the ground. The beekeepers hear the bear and quickly respond to try to protect the bees. All the beekeepers grab onto the hives to open them and free the bees, the histamines. The bees are released everywhere and cause a commotion leading to the honey being spilled everywhere. The histamines cause inflammation and with all of the irritation to the airway, more mucus is produced and enters the airway. The honey is like the mucus. So how exactly should I treat my severe asthma? There are many medications that can be taken, but they usually fall into two types. The first are rescue inhalers, 
which are taken to quickly relieve symptoms such as shortness of breath, chest tightness, wheezing and coughing. These inhalers provide relief temporarily by reducing the bronchoconstriction in your airways. Remember the straw being squeezed? The rescue inhalers stop the squeezing and make it easier for you to breathe. The second medications are long-acting medications, which are often steroids used to help decrease the inflammation of the airway over time. These long-acting medications are taken daily to help reduce the frequency and severity of symptoms. They're like running water that works to clean out the ice and slime in your juice straw. If you shut the water off, it stops working. So now you might be wondering, how do I manage my asthma in my day-to-day -day life? Treatment plans are tailored to each patient, which means you and Reese may have different medications. You should always avoid exposure to triggers, which are again, different for each patient. You should also be taking your inhaled medications as prescribed and as needed. Take your long-acting medications, your oral corticosteroids, to ensure they continue to work. It is extremely important to stay on top of taking the medications to prevent the asthma from getting worse. Also, remember that it is your right to have your inhaler on you at school or anywhere in case of an emergency. It is important to always know where the inhaler is located and as soon as you feel an asthma attack starting, stop what you are doing and take your inhaler. So how do you take an inhaler? There are two main ways to take an inhaler, with a spacer or without a spacer. There are many advantages to taking an inhaler with a spacer as it makes it easier to receive the medication that you need. It has been shown that a spacer can allow for an individual to get three times more medication compared to no spacer being used. To start, you will take off the mouth cap and make sure that it is clean. You will then shake the inhaler about 10 to 15 times. The next step includes putting the inhaler mouthpiece into the end of the spacer. You will not complete this step if you are not using a spacer. Then take a big deep breath in and then breathe out all of the way. Hold the inhaler and spacer between your pointer finger and thumb and then put the mouthpiece of the spacer into your mouth and above your tongue. Then close your lips around it. Tilt your head back and press on the inhaler once. Breathe in slowly and deeply. Breathe in all the air you can and hold for 5 to 10 seconds. Open your mouth and breathe out slowly. So what does asthma mean for me? It is important to remember that you can still live a healthy life. Asthma is a manageable disease and should not prevent you from living an enjoyable life. And it is important to follow medical advice as well as your treatment plan on a regular basis.